Good morning. Welcome to East Tucson Baptist Church. I'm Carl, and this is our prayer and reflection time. I hope everybody is enduring the heat well because we're having record highs here in Tucson. So you can probably hear the AC running, and you may see a little sweat on my eyebrow. That's just the things we have to go through living in Tucson. Today is Father's Day, so we're going to honor fathers by looking at probably a negative example of fatherhood. You know, we look at fathers on TV and we see guys like Homer Simpson and we think, wow, what a terrible father. I mean, he's fat, lazy, foolish, short-tempered, self-centered, and so on and so forth. He's just a terrible father. But at least in the early seasons, he was written to be lovable because in spite of those shortcomings, he always would come back around and he would love his family. He would always come back to that point where he'd overcome his selfishness to show love to his family. And maybe you've seen a few of these negative attributes with your own father. And I think pastor's kids have this even worse. They go to church every Sunday and hear all these praises about how godly and wonderful their father is. But they go home and they see all of his imperfections and how he falls short of that image. And then when they grow up, they start to accept that he can't live up to that perfect image. But they learn how to live a godly life in spite of those shortcomings. We look at the, the fathers of the Old Testament. We have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, a Christian comedian years back was making a joke about them that, you know, they seem like a dysfunctional family you'd see on daytime TV. And their just family structure was awful. But we can see in Hebrews that these men were recognized not for their shortcomings, but for the faithfulness they had in God. Hebrews 11, 17, 20, and 21. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. Verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning on top of his staff. So first, as we pray, let's ask for forgiveness towards our fathers. Some of our fathers, okay, what did I say? Fallen a little short. Others have done serious harm to their children. Okay. So as we pray, first let's pray for forgiveness for our fathers. Some of our fathers have merely fallen a little short, and others have done serious harm to their children. But pray to God that you can forgive them for what they have done. Forgive your fathers for what they have done to you. Fathers, confess how you have hurt your family, and pray that they can forgive you. And this also goes for everyone who isn't a father, too. Confess how you have hurt those in your family your home family, or your church family, and ask for forgiveness. And also pray for a spiritual legacy, that you can pass on that faithfulness to the next generation, that they can be stronger believers and continue to serve and grow the kingdom of God. So will you please pray with me? Lord, I thank you for this day that we can come together and worship you and celebrate fathers. Lord, you are our Heavenly Father, and you are the perfect one. But our earthly fathers have fallen short. Lord, help us to forgive them for the ways that they have hurt us, whether small or great. Help us to forgive them. And Lord, for the fathers out there, and also for anyone else, we confess to you the ways that we have fallen short in loving our families. Lord, help us to ask forgiveness from our families for how we have hurt them and not lived up to what we ought to. But Lord, I also pray as we go forward that you help us to be leaving behind a spiritual legacy, one that blesses the next generation to be faithful servants, to honor you and praise you. Lord, in these things we pray to you, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. And let's continue on with our services today.